Hey everybody, Tom here with Hidden Beats, and today we are talking with Annika for the second time. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. It's a nice day out, so that's always a bonus. Yes, I was going to say summer is finally here. Calgary is getting some rain, which is always welcome. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm happy that summer is has arrived. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I burn easy, so I also have to be oh, no. concerned about summer. But <laughs> See, I'm I tan very easily. So as soon as the sun comes out, I'm like outside all day, every day, trying to get as dark as possible. So mm -hmm. I was blessed with the ability to tan very well. I wish I'm actually part <laughs> native and I didn't get that part of, of my it at goodness. All. Oh yeah, no! Just, I go straight from white to red. It's there's no <laughs> no in between. That's hilarious. Yeah, it's just it's so funny. You realize it almost too late each summer. You think, okay, this will be the year, and then you look like a lobster right away. You know, it happens. I mean, I realized that early on. There was a point where I actually spent time in a hospital for a sunburn. So, oh my goodness! I have okay. to have sunscreen all the time. All the time, sun shirts, hats. You got it all going on. Oh, problem is, is I don't like sleeves either, though. So I have to like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, the thing is, I see like even like with my kids, I'm like, sun shirts just feel like they'd be uncomfortable in the blazing heat. But sometimes mm -hmm. I guess it's not worth a burn in the hospital. For sure. Yeah, it was, uh, it was an interesting night for sure. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. Well, we're here today to, uh, to talk more a bit about you and your music instead of me and my sunburns. So <laughs> for those who are, are new to to you and, and our interviews. Can you give a little intro about yourself? Yeah, so my name is Annika and I'm a singer songwriter from Calgary, Alberta. And um, I like to describe my music as being on the fringes of country. Uh, I grew up listening to country music. I love writing country music and uh, was part of a duo, a country duo for several years before going on my own. And so this is uh, kind of my reintroduction to the world um, with this, with second EP now, but um, I would describe my music as as singer songwritery, but has that country storytelling aspect to it, and uh, usually pretty emotional performances. Uh, this single is certainly no expe exception to that. Mm -hmm. And we, like I said, we've talked before, so I'm I'm familiar with your music, and I've been a fan ever since you came across my desk the first time. So I was excited when I saw your name pop up again that we get to catch up and and yeah. Yeah, so, it's been really fun because I uh, I released my first album back in 2021 when we first spoke and not my album, but my first single. And um, and so it's you never know when you, you start a solo project, how it's going to go. And so it really is a treat to be back now, two years later, after having released all the songs I have and, and more music out in the world, which is always as an artist. The dream is just to keep getting music out there. So I'm very happy that we're chatting again. Mm hmm. Now. I didn't think about asking this last time, but do you remember the first album or song that really got you into music way back in the day? Yes. Um, when I was 12 years old, I listened to Stevie Wonder's Definitive Collection. Okay. Um, I don't even know how, I think I got it, um, it as a stocking stuffer. Do you remember when like parents used to give CDs as part of mm -hmm. your Christmas gifts? Man, yeah, yeah. that's I'm, I'm dating myself now too, but I got, I remember I had, mentioned that I liked Stevie Wonder or something and I got that album and it's a long album you know there's like mm -hmm. 18 to 20 songs on it and I remember dancing around my room to sign still delivered and since then that has been my favorite song I, I just like I remember the feeling of this artist making me feel something which was just fun and dancing and happy and I know not all of my songs make people feel like that but I remember distinctly being like I want to do this this is this is a really amazing thing to be able to have your own music affect someone. So I do remember that very distinctly. And then I got to see Stevie Wonder in concert uh, probably six or seven years ago. And uh, mm -hmm. it was such a full circle moment because I feel like the music you listen to when you're like 12, 13, 14, you remember forever. It like mm -hmm. has a place inside of you that, um, that you always treasure. So Stevie Wonder was my first real album in that way. Yeah, Stevie Wonders. I'm I'm a huge fan too, and completely jealous that you got to see him live because that yes. would be, that would have been perfect. It was everything you would imagine and more. He had backup singers, and the band was like 20 people. And for his encore, he just did like 30 seconds of his biggest hits for like okay. seven minutes. It was just, I mean, it was amazing. 
Yeah, that 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 sounds awesome. I think the the yeah. one I have in the same scenario of that realm is uh, Frankie Valli. I saw him live. <gasps> wow. Yeah. Wow. That, was, that would be incredible. Yeah, he, you know, a little bit older. Can't he's not moving around like he yep. used to. But those the pipes still are right on key, and oh, that was a great yes for sure. That's amazing. Mm hmm. So the main reason we're here to talk today is about your new single. It kills yeah. me. Yeah. You give me a yes. little bit of a insight on that. So it kills me was actually inspired by um kind of the James Bond movie theme songs that kind mm -hmm. of have this very distinct sound to them. Um I was I was I think I was listening to Skyfall by Adele and I thought, man, this is such a cool genre of music that is very specific to this, but I love the sultry dramatic cinematic vibe of it it'd be fun to write a song like this even though i thought there's no way i'd be able to release it because unfortunately the james bond people have not asked me to write a song for for their movies yet but um i had had this hook it kills me for a while and thought that would pair really nicely with kind of a james bond type of song and then my husband who i wrote the song with um he had the piano a very distinct piano part that mm. I thought, oh my goodness, all these things are coming together. So we wrote it with two other uh, guys. And um, what what it ended up being was a very James Bond sounding song. It's kind of that 60s, 70 inspired um, sound with lots of strings, it's very dramatic. And um, I'm sure some people might wonder what it's doing kind of in the country realm of things. But to me, uh, it does have that scorned woman who keeps coming back for more you know storyline and um it it's a song that just is kind of a power ballad um mm. that we just let this song do what it was going to do so it's kind of genreless in a way but um and a bit different than some of my other releases but um we listened to it after we produced it and we thought this has to be a single just because it's really fun and different and and something new for the listeners yeah and i was listening to it james bond is the i i was trying to pick what what it was that made me think of that so that that's perfect and I yeah. actually kind of looked at it like James Bond meets um before he cheats like with the yes I love that, that. Kind of combination of the two because it has I'm that, gonna use that, that power now. ballad that's a good way yes that's a great way to describe it because it, it's not um it's not something that I really knew how to categorize and mm -hmm. um but I think you're right it, that the country element comes in into it in that kind of before he cheats way and it's um it's a very dramatic song but i'm kind of a dramatic person so i think it works works well for me oh it's a it's a great track i, I as soon as i put it on i was i was mo like moving my head to it like wow okay this oh. this works it's great oh i'm glad i'm glad mm -hmm. now how do you think your your music has evolved from like back in 2021 when we first talked until now yeah, it's crazy because I think um, most of what I, is going on this album I had written before 2021, like the songs were already written, but we hadn't done the production side of things until this past year. And I feel like because my producer is also my husband, who also has written the songs with me, it's been very cool to see how the production has added to the songs while mm -hmm. also making sure that the vision from the original songwriting session is carried through. I think it would be very difficult if I wrote a bunch of songs and then went to someone new to do this part, someone else new to do this part, um, to really maintain the vision. So it's, it's interesting looking at the uh, music from 2021, I think mostly the production has evolved to just always accurately re represent kind of where I'm at in life and, and what I'm, who I authentically am essentially. And so um, with It Kills Me, we just really decided to go wild. Like it was like, well, strings aren't usually in country music. We're going to do it anyway. Well, piano is usually not the defining feature of a lot of country songs, but we're going to do it anyway. We just kind of have followed the music where it's led instead of being concerned about staying inside a category, which I think at the beginning of my career in 2021, I was more concerned about fitting into this mold of, of what country music is or pop country, shall I say. So I think it's cool to just see how um, throughout the last two years, I've been able to evolve as an artist and as a woman and let the, the production elements run wild um, in a, in a way and um, still representing who I am. Mm -hmm. And I mean, last time we talked too, you said you, you wanted to bring the piano back into things and, 
So it's yes, not not going forward is definitely great. Yes, and this song is definitely the most piano forward song I've ever released. I think I've tried to kind of not hide it, but feature the piano in a way that still supports other instruments. Whereas this song, it's definitely the other instruments that have come in to support the piano. So. Yeah, I'm all for bringing piano back to country music. We need some more Phil Vassar vibes, you know? Mm -hmm. It's it's nice just to have, and and piano fills a room. Piano just does yes. something extra. So it's it's nice to see some of that back in country for sure. Yeah. Do you think your, your process when you're actually putting together, like, so you and your husband put together the first, the first tracks and the first singles in 2021, did your process actually evolved when you're putting together like did you learn new tips and tricks kind of thing you know it's it's kind of weird because I have only ever had one producer which has been my husband I knew him for years before we ever started dating so I've been kind of um sheltered in terms of production styles and I've just always worked with the same person so I think all that has happened is we just become closer um well, obviously, as we're married, we're closer now than ever. And as parents, you know, a lot of our strategies around production is how do we record music while the kids are napping or yeah. not around? Uh, we've had to kind of adjust to make make music differently now than we did five years ago. Um, but I, I have always been very, uh, I don't want to say not picky, but I very much respect the producer in in their element. I am not great at instrumentation or, oh, the guitar player should try this or do that. I very much feel like I'm a singer songwriter. And then when I hand it over to the producer, of course I'm there, um, but I don't get super involved in that part. And I think that's continued on with, with, uh, with these songs. I honestly just let him do what he does best. If there's something that I really don't like, then, you know, I'll say something, but I found that because he's in the room as a writer, he understands the vision so well that I'm very different than a lot of artists in that way. Some artists are just like very involved. They like to learn how to produce. And I just simply have no interest in it. I love writing the song with piano, vocals, and then handing it over to Spencer and, you know, just listening to talented musicians do what they do best and uh, kind of letting the song be its own thing without trying to like micromanage everything. So Spencer and I are in a good groove mostly because he likes that I let him do what he wants. Mm -hmm. And I like that he does. I like what he does. So it always works out well. It's nice to have that trust in someone too, that you, you know, they're going to yes. be able to do something. Yes. And I remember um, when I was with leaving Thomas, we were, he was working on our album and we thought about going to Nashville to get it produced. And um, it just, it didn't feel the same when, you know, you have these Nashville producers, not that they're all like this, but a lot of them are dealing with so many artists, so many songs. It's like, they're not necessarily really invested in your project. So Spencer is invested in lots of different ways. He's also the drummer. He's the musical director. He writes on the songs. He mixes the songs, you know? So I think that's a very special partnership that I'm very blessed to have in this industry because, um, you know, producers are really busy and they don't necessarily have the time to dedicate that much to uh to each song whereas i know with my stuff he is you know very invested and wants to make it the absolute best he can mm -hmm. and so last time we talked to you were you released what you called twingles with your two singles <laughs> yeah. and yeah. you know the kind of the a side the b side of things and kind of different feels how has has your releases kind of changed now since then like you're you released the one single yeah. and Kinda. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I love releasing the B sides because there's a lot of, um, you know, different vibes that, that come on an album. And it used to be that you would release the whole album. People would kind of hear the story from start to finish. And so I didn't want to just get to release an album and have a bunch of songs get lost in the mix because I feel like sadly people, people don't listen to albums anymore the same way they did. They don't get CDs in their stockings and listen to it over Christmas break from, from top to bottom. So, um, it was kind of fun to see what is it like to receive, to, you know, release a single and then see this other song. But what I found with this, this EP is that it's a, it's just a lot of work to release every song. And so um, we wanted to do music videos for this single. We wanted to do proper publicity. We wanted to, you know, I'm going to Canadian music next week and I wanted to promote this single fully. And um, I think because we were still kind of in COVID times with the Twingles, it was easy to digitally release stuff and, and give it a lot of attention. 
Whereas now we've decided let's really throw ourselves into the singles. And, um, and then once we release the EP kind of more in a more traditional way, we'll have people that um, will listen to the full album and some people that might only ever know the singles, but that's why um, we've released singles that we're, I'm really passionate about and really want to promote fully. Mm -hmm. And speaking of music videos, we talked a bit about that last time too. And, and the idea that not, you know, not needing to break the bank on, on a video these days, but now with the way music scene and everything is videos are making a very strong comeback. Yeah. What, what do you think the, uh, the push behind that? Yeah. I think in this, in this day and age, people love to be watching something while listening to something. It's almost like our attention spans, like want more to look at more to see more to do. Um, but it is hard because music videos are expensive, but you can make some really cool videos if you, I believe, find the right director. And so uh, we made the music video for It Kills Me um, all in Calgary. We we used all Calgarians to be part of it, which I think is really fun and cool that you don't have to travel to Toronto or some exotic location to make a really epic music video. And um and I just found a videographer that gets my vision. He gets what I want to do. But again, I go to a music video director and say, here's the song. I want to hear and see what you see. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't need my vision as a musician because the medium of video is not my strong suit at all. So it is so exciting when a videographer sends back the treatment and they don't all they've done is hear the song and what ideas come to their brains. Mm -hmm. I love seeing the treatment idea. And then normally it's me and the videographer saying, okay, how do we do this on a budget, you know, that is very limited compared to Hollywood blockbuster, you know, budgets. And it's almost an, a fun challenge to work on together to say, okay, this might be, we can't shoot this because it's going to cost $20,000. How can we convey the same message with, you know, something a bit more cost effective? So I love that process. And again, I love letting, the videography team do what they do best instead of trying to get in there. And I don't have a lot of great ideas about music videos, but I've found um, the director for this one, Oliver Banyard. He's directed several of my videos. He's so talented and I love his vision. And um, he always brings the song to life in a new way. And I think like growing up, I remember music videos for my favorite song. It's also another way to, to connect with a listener. Um, and so I, I hope that this music video does that does that for that song because that's what I think is most special about music videos. Yeah, I have one of the guys on the team who's who's like a that's all he does is video, and he's been putting together some some really nice storytelling videos. But I mean, we're we're not a big time company that can right. spend thousands upon thousands of dollars of things, but it's nice. To yeah, see a video that tells a story about something. Yes, it's not over. You know. Out, outrageous and crazy all over the place yeah and I found that with COVID happening and live performances being so few and far between it's another way to have have the, the listeners see you perform you know like I always want part of the music video to be me actually you know kind of performing lip syncing the song so that listeners get an idea of what that would be like because we were so deprived of it for so so many years, honestly, mm -hmm. uh, that that's also a, a part of it for me too. For sure. And speaking of you know live music and and everything like that, what's what's your thoughts on the kind of explosion of of music now when the there's so many concerts and releases and things out there these yeah. days? Yeah, well, that's the thing. I felt really blessed that during COVID, I happened to be married to a producer, so. Um, when everyone was kind of recording, I was able to get in there and do that too. Um, but we've, we've definitely noticed that after COVID there has been this explosion and sometimes it's just, it can be a bit daunting competing with everyone doing everything at the same time as you. Uh, but the way I look at it is listeners that have been waiting for new music will be there to listen to the new music. And so, um, yes, there's lots going on. I'm excited to be back doing live performances. I have two exciting performances coming up in Toronto in June. Um, and I'm so excited to get back on stage. But I think also, as a mom of two, I just also can't do 150 performances a year. So I think it's we're in this, this day and age now where 
Um, I really want to be thoughtful about my live performances and cater to the fans that want to hear the music and, um, and also recognize that everyone else is going to be doing their own thing. There's going to be lots of shows and, and that's wonderful as a, as a patron, I love going to live music and seeing people out again. Um, but it is a lot, there's a lot happening for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've got, uh, I, I think something like 200 live shows on my, my list for the team to cover already. And it's wow. Same. Yeah. And then hopefully, you know, actually I've got a couple of my team in Toronto. We can probably get out to, to check out you when you're out there. Yes, and... please come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm on Tuesday night, June, June 6th at a, at 11 PM, which is a very late show for me as a mother. Again, I'm usually in bed <laughs> by nine. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm coming back out for North by Northeast, uh, on the 16th and I'm performing at midnight. So it's like, if you have, a, if you guys have uh, people that are willing to stay up late and come out and rally, that would be awesome. I'll definitely, I'll touch base with the team after this and see what yeah. we can do. That sounds um, great. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm interested in all that stuff. Live shows have been crazy. I think I'm personally sub scheduled for at least three festivals this year for coverage for yeah. myself. Is wow. crazy For me too. So since we've last talked, I've actually, I have a seven month old now. So my life got a little bit more. Oh my goodness. I can't get Congratulations. it. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. She's very, very fun and full of energy right now. So it's. Oh, like, amazing. But it's, it's crazy when you have that now, you can't go do as much or there's so many other things. Like I can't leave my wife yes. alone for three, three, four days at a time sometimes. Yes. Yes, I'm I'm out in Toronto for five days and my husband will be at home with a two year old and a uh, five month old. And so okay. this is that's the only time I'm doing it, though. I'm like, you know, it's it's a ton of work to organize it. And also you just want to be around your children. And so sometimes it's hard to leave. So I feel really good about the number of shows I have this year. It's not too crazy, but the ones that I am doing, I'm really excited about and I'm super excited to be to be back on stage again. No, that should be nice. So one one of the things I like to do when I'm doing an interview and I've, you know, back in 2021, I'm, I wasn't the best at necessarily come up with questions. So I started to add this one into my repertoire to, okay. to boost things. I'm curious, hey. what's one thing you think should be asked more in an interview that's not asked enough? Oh my goodness. I, I'm sure you've gotten some really great answers. Um, one, uh, question that I'd like to answer that I've only been asked a few times is um, kind of what what was your biggest uh, learning experience as an artist okay. not necessarily like where did you where did you fail or where but but we always talk about um, you know the highs usually of an artist's career and all the highlights you know we look at an EPK and it's all the the good things that have happened but I think for artists that are maybe not at the peak of their career or they're still learning, it's always nice to know kind of where, where there are easy places to trip up or to fall. And that, um, yeah, like for me, it was my biggest not mistake. I don't want to say mistake, but something I've learned is that it's important to have interests, hobbies, passions outside of music. I think so often artists are told you have, it's all or nothing. You've got to hustle. You've got to, dedicate your entire life to this and um something I've learned is that when I did that I didn't have as interesting songs because I wasn't living life outside of the music industry and um and I wasn't as happy as I am now because I get to be creative and I'm excited about all the things I get to do with music because I have other stuff going on and there's so much about music that you can't control in terms of success and um opportunities so it's good to have something else going on so that you really can treasure and enjoy your um, your time as a musician. And maybe I just asked that question and answered it, which even your question was, what was the question? Not answer your own question, but there I did. I did the whole thing. So I don't no, know if that, that's too much. That's great. And actually that kind of rolls into my next question is what, what do you do outside of music to keep yourself kind of grounded and leveled? Yes. Well, definitely being a mom it keeps me very busy and very grounded, very humbled. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I, uh, I play pickleball 
which is maybe not the coolest thing, but I love pickleball. Mm -hmm. And um, I also love to travel. Honestly, um, I'm going to Alaska this year in the summer, which I'm very excited about. And um, I, I worked on cruise ships for many years. So I'm very used to traveling and having kids has kind of slowed that down. But I'm trying to get, you know, make that a priority again, even though it's a bit a bit different when you have kids traveling with you, but mm -hmm. um, I love seeing the world and having new experiences, meeting new people, new cultures, eating new food. Like I love all that. So um, I always said my biggest passions are traveling and music. So they kind of both go hand in hand, which is nice. No, that works. That's awesome. And then, so another fun one I have is what's something on your go-to playlist that people wouldn't expect you're listening to? Oh, I was going like to oh, well, I, I, I was gonna say, I love musical theater. So oftentimes I'm listening to Wicked or Hamilton or uh, Nine to Five. I mean, I'm listening to uh, Broadway musicals. I always thought I'd be a Broadway actress. It didn't happen for me. Wasn't my calling. But um, that is a big love of mine beyond, uh, you know, pop or country music is I love Broadway musicals. Oh, that's awesome. I actually recently found an artist that kind of gives that Broadway feel, but with classical inputs and like ballad inputs. And it was kind of really interesting. He's out of Germany. And oh. I kind of went, wow, okay, this this is real interesting, this guy. Yeah, that's great. So it's fun to find, it's fun to listen and, and kind of experience some of those different things. And and I, I like yeah. to ask that question because it helps me boost my playlist. I've got a playlist of just songs of things that I'm asking people. Right. I was going to say, now you've got to add Broadway musicals to the list. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I've got me some musical stuff in there. Like, uh, like, yeah. I, I think it's very underrated and people don't give it enough credit. But like Disney Channel writing sometimes for like things yes, like high school so musical. Good. They, yep, for sure. You no, know, they may be songs you wouldn't expect someone like me to listen to but the writing behind some of those songs and then the performances and stuff like they're really well done yeah I agree I agree mm -hmm. is there any artists out there that you're listening to kind of maybe local or independent that you think more people should be listening to um well they're not local or independent but the band Camino is one of my favorite bands right now and Maybe they're big among people. I don't know. They're they're none of my friends listen to them, and that's the band I'm telling everyone about all the time now. Is they're the one band that I want to see in concert more than anything, and um, I just think they're underrated. I think they're. I know they're popular, but I think they should be even more popular because they're awesome. No, that's 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 the type of stuff I want to hear. Something that's that's there that people are just loving because I don't think people get enough chance to hear the everything. Yeah. There's too much out there. Yeah, exactly. So the band Camino. Perfect. Now, a couple, I got two last questions. They're both probably the most important ones. Is okay. why, why music? Why do you keep doing what you're doing? I think music has always been uh, a type of therapy for me. I think that it's a way to express myself that has existed since I was 10 years old. And it's just part of my identity now. I feel like I no matter what happens on the industry side of things, music will always be a part of my life because it's part of who I am. And um, I love, I love what it does for my soul. I'm not usually very concerned with success on the other side of things because I know I can't control it, but I just try to, to make music that's authentic to me and um, makes my soul happy. And that's what I've been able to do for now 22 years. And so I'm just going to keep going. That's awesome. And and finally, what do you hope people take away from your music? Well, I always hope that, that if it res if my music resonates with people, that's always a bonus. I feel like sometimes we get so caught up in what do the fans want to hear? What's going to make them happy? What's, and, and you just get lost in this kind of merry-go-round of how to please everyone else. And so mm -hmm. the way I look at it is my expectation is that you know, I make music because it makes me happy. And then my hope is that it either makes other people happy or makes them feel something just, you know, the same way I felt when I listened to Stevie Wonder's album. And um, I always found his music comforting. And um, and so I know that our uh, listeners might get different things that I don't expect. And I love that too. If, if it resonates with them in some way, that's just always a bonus to me. Yeah, the goal is to touch someone somehow with your music. Yes. Yes. 
And if you're being authentic as an artist, I believe that happens more easily than when you're trying to, you know, reach reach fans specifically in a, in a very distinct way. So that's what I've done and it seems to have worked. So I'm mm, happy yeah. about that. You, you can tell organic versus manufactured for sure. Exactly. Well, that's all I have written down. And I mean, is there any kind of final notes, words of wisdom you'd like to leave to listeners new and old? I, I think you covered it all. I, uh, I hope I didn't bore you with all my answers. I tend to get on tangents and get a little lengthy, but I, that's all I have to say today. And I really appreciate your time. No, I, 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 I love getting to catch and and we, we had fun last time and it was, it was yeah. a pleasure this time again. And we're going to make sure we link everything for the, for all the new, re- I think the, the new single comes out tomorrow or something like that. Yes, it does. Tomorrow's the big day. Yes. I will, I'll do my damnedest to get this video up tomorrow then. So we can have okay. everything at the same time. That would be wonderful. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Well, you enjoy the rest of your day. It looks really nice behind you Thank outside you. there. And, and the Thank kids are probably you. itching to do yep. something. So Yes, yep. We'll get outside and go to probably three playgrounds today. If, there you, you know. go. Yeah, for sure. Well, we're going to sign off. And we're. I'm sure we're going to have another conversation again because it's always fun to catch up. And whenever you have something you'd like me to share, by all means, send it my way. That sounds great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Not a problem. You have a good one. You too.